welcome to Super Bell Sews. My name's Sarah. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, most of you will know that I've been away for a few weeks, and the reason for that is because I was getting married. Um, and now I am married. There's another little ring on there. It's only teeny, so you might not see it. Um, but yeah, so today's video, I thought I would just update you on a bit about the wedding, um, how it all went, the some of the outfits that I wore, that Nathan wore, bridesmaids, flower girls, things like that. Um, and then some of the things I made for the wedding. There'll be a separate vlog um, later in the week about more general sewing stuff. So if you're not interested in the wedding stuff, which is totally fine, please feel free to skip this one and watch the next one. So how did it all go? Uh, the day itself was amazing. Like honestly could not have asked for a better day, um, which was even more amazing considering how badly the day before went. So, um, let's pick up where we left off, shall we? So last time you saw me, my hair had all been dyed black. I was a bit stressed about it. On the Friday, I spent five hours in the hairdresser's chair um, getting my hair dyed back to being brown. So they had to put a colour stripper in to strip the black out and they added in some highlights just to lighten the colour up a bit more because it was still quite dark. Um, but I had brown hair. So that was a bit over a week before the wedding, just before we went up north. Um, I spent a lot of time and money getting my hair back to something closer to my original hair colour. Um, after that, the rest of the week had sort of been going fine. Um, lots of little pampering trips. Uh, there was a singer who dropped out of the choir. But other than that, it was really straightforward. Had our rehearsal on the Thursday, everything went fine. Now, anyone who lives in the UK will know there was a storm around that time. I think it was called Storm Babette. Um, and basically on the Friday, all hell broke loose, guys. It was bad. So first up, the flooding in the northeast and stuff was pretty bad and it affected the train line. So a lot of guests were due to come up on the Friday and the trains were pretty much all cancelled. Um, so at that point, we were getting endless messages of, People, one of my bridesmaids, one of Nathan's best men, Nathan's mum, brother and aunt, um, the entire choir, loads of other guests were saying, like a lot of my best friends from union stuff saying, we're not going to be able to make it. Um, so we were looking at having a half size wedding. Um, we were prepping my dad. How many meals can you eat, dad? Because we paid for these. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So that was very stressful. Part one, we thought we weren't going to have any guests. I thought I wasn't going to have any of the music I'd planned. Blah, blah, blah. Um, also, my mum was on her way. We'd been, so we'd been due to have a very, like, a quietish day that Friday. Pretty much everything was done. My mum was driving across in the morning to the church to help with the flowers. The gearbox in her car got flooded. She ended up stuck by the side of the road for over six hours. Um, the RAC did not come. She was waiting for them all that time. They then said, very unhelpfully, when her battery was just going flat, so it had gotten dark, her battery was going flat from the hazard lights being on, and she said, I'm just going to have to abandon the car. They said, legally, you can't abandon the car uh, because the hazard lights wouldn't be working. So then my dad had to go and tow her in amongst all of the other stuff that was happening that day. Um, and also, my wedding dress and my veil had been in my mum's car, so my dad moved it over to his car, and when he got it back to the house, we opened up the boot and the wind took the veil and flew it into a muddy puddle. So my veil was then covered in mud. That was the point that I burst into tears. Uh, my dad was not there for my crying. So <laughs> he was like, stop crying, get it together, get inside. So I just sort of sobbed my way inside. Um, one of my bridesmaids, Sarah, and um, one of Nathan's family members, Doretta, Swept it out of my hand, they took it upstairs, they washed all the mud off in the shower and they dried it. So they saved the veil. Um, but I think it was, the crying wasn't just for the veil. I think the veil was the last straw. Um, the crying was for like how much everything could have gone wrong in such a short amount of time. Like everything seemed fine. And then the weather turned. It didn't matter how much planning we'd done, stuff was just going to go wrong. So... The Friday was very stressful. A lot of people really stepped up and helped. Um, my A couple of people had managed to get on trains, but they travelled. So I think my bridesmaid was supposed to arrive at 5 or 6pm and she ended up arriving close to midnight. 
um, the trains were sort of taking seven hours as opposed to three hours. So um, a very small handful of people managed to get up on the Friday. Um, but as we went into Saturday, I basically didn't know. I didn't know if people were going to get there. I didn't know if we were going to have a choir at all. Um, yeah, we just didn't know who was going to make it. Um, and my one of my best friends, Billy, who was one of my bridesmen, he took my phone off me in the morning and he said, I'm going to deal with it. And uh, let me know the music you want and I'll have it downloaded and ready to go if the choir aren't there. Um, and it's not just about like, the reason I was quite convinced there wouldn't be a choir is because the music I'd picked required having a lot of different voices. So some of it was eight part one to a voice stuff. So if you have more than a couple of people missing, the music just doesn't work. So I was thinking this isn't going to happen, but it's not my problem now. The morning was great. The flower girls came. They looked so cute, but I'll get onto them later. Um, and yeah, I was none the wiser. Turned up at the church. The music started and I didn't know at that point if it was because uh, it sounded like the recording at the beginning. And then when one of the soloists started who sounded different to the recording soloists, that's the moment. So like as I was walking into the church is when I knew that my friends were there singing and um, yeah, so it was it was very emotional, the service. I think it would have been emotional anyway, but almost like the stress of the day before and the fact, I mean, pretty much everyone made it. Pretty much everyone. Um, there were a couple of people who missed the ceremony, but they made it up for the reception. It was really tiny amount of people who didn't make it at all. Um and like a couple of those were for unrelated reasons that they told us before that that they wouldn't be able to make it for other things so I think it was only like one or two couples who didn't make it for um weather reasons which was amazing and the weather was gorgeous on the Saturday like even the best forecast had been like it won't be a storm but it's still gonna be miserable and the weather was beautiful we got these sunset pictures um we got these pictures on the moors that just looked amazing we got to do the confetti shots like Everything we thought we wouldn't be able to do a day before, we were able to do and it was beautiful. It was honestly, you could not have asked for better in terms of the weather and everything. And actually the whole day was just amazing. It was amazing. And it was more, it was more amazing because the day before had been so bad. So maybe it was meant to be that way. I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's the gist of it. I'm sure you'll get other details as we go and I'll add some pictures in along with this. And then I'll also add some random bits and bobs in at the end, just in case it's of interest. Um, so first, maybe if I talk about the dress, my dress. So I'll put a picture of the full dress here. I cannot remember how much I told you about this. Um, it is by a designer called Studio Lavana, and I purchased it from a shop called Lush Curve in Dorking. Now, at some point, I'm going to do a video just about my dress shopping experience because... As a plus size bride, it is so stressful. Um, and I actually had a great, I did a lot of research and I had a great time. Um, and I know that if I'd been able to get all of that information in one place, it would have really alleviated a lot of stress. So I will do a video on my dress shopping experience with some of the other styles I tried on. But this is the dress I ended up choosing. Um, and I'll show you the original. So the really cool thing about Studio Lavana is that you can swap any elements between dresses. So like you could go, I want that dress, but I want that fabric, or I want to add this or take that away or whatever. I want this skirt, this top, um, without, without extra charge. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, the original dress I'll put here. The main thing you'll notice is the sleeves. So it had these little straps um, and I ended up adding these off the shoulder puff sleeves almost. Um, I knew I wanted the sleeves the whole time. Initially, I was just going to have little straight sleeves. And then I decided a bit further down the line that I wanted to change them to puff. And they did that for me. Um, and yeah, I'm really chuffed with it. I'm going to tell you some of the things I loved about this dress. Main thing was the fabric. So as soon as we went into the shop, I'm a bit of a magpie. I was drawn towards the sparkle. Um, I'm going to be honest. Would I have bought this dress if I couldn't have added the sleeves? Probably not, um, just because the proportions, I think, weren't as good on me with the little off the shoulder straps. Um, and I think I wouldn't have felt as comfortable. Um, 
yeah so it was it that's one of the pluses of being able to make it your own little dress um so yeah the fabric i loved it's an embroidered lace on the top uh and then there are sequins sewn in all over it so it really catches the light and sparkles um it's a, a fairly slim fit silhouette um i'm quite short so i didn't want to have anything too big although i did try on some styles with bigger skirts and actually the one to beat when i went to this shop to get this dress uh had a more of a a-line classic skirt um but this one i love the silhouette it had this beautiful train um with this lovely art deco i think the thing with that lace as well is the pattern wasn't like a traditional fussy lace it was it had that sort of art deco design it was a bit different um and i mean the train was just to die for so beautiful um yeah so those are some of the elements i really loved i love the off the shoulder look um it actually has mesh around the front and the back at the top so you get that open neckline but it's much more secure um and i thought i wouldn't like an illusion neckline but actually it was not very obvious that it was there a lot of the time like my mum when she was putting the dress on me was like oh i didn't even realize there was mesh so when she saw me trying on the shop she hadn't even noticed the mesh was there um uh the neckline now i actually thought i looked sort of banging with that really low neckline i've never worn a neckline that low um but because i was getting married in a church i thought i'd feel a bit self-conscious so we asked for some extra lace uh from the designer and the seamstress added in a removable panel so it has invisible poppers inside under the mesh um with a view that i could take it out for party time which i ended up not doing because it would have involved taking the whole dress off and i just i wanted to party didn't want to take the dress off um yeah so i think that's oh the corset that's the other thing so studio lavana have their own corset design and it is amazing so in some of their dresses they'll have a full corset that goes all the way down to your hips um my dress only had a waist corset which is obviously more comfortable um but i mean i'm in that dress i do not have a stitch of underwear on there is no bra and like i was contained um i thought the boobs looked amazing to be honest so it I think that's one of the elements when I talk about not being able to make my own dress. I think that structure is something that I am just not skilled enough to make. Like I would not have been able to make a dress that would have held me in like that, let alone working with that gorgeous lace. I just, I think I ended up with the dress that I really wanted. And I know that however much I would love to say I could make something like that, there's no way. There's no way. Um, and it felt really a treat to wear something so gorgeous. And sort of now I can't wait to look at some of the construction. I think down the line, when my skills are a bit more advanced, I'm going to be going back to that dress and seeing like, okay, how could I put something together like this? How could I do this? How could I do that? So, um, yeah, I was really chuffed with it. I hope you like it too. I mean, if you don't, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because everyone's got different tastes. But I... Honestly, I can't imagine a dress that I would have loved more. I just felt so gorgeous in it. Um, yeah, it was exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted. So, uh, yeah, that's my dress. So then next, let's look at the groom's outfit. Nathan uh, had a custom-made suit by a company called, I think it was called Edit Suits. Edit Suits, I think. Um, so he went up to London and he told them what he wanted and they made him so he has these gorgeous the trousers are merino wool they made him a proper dress shirt and then he's got this velvet jacket so he picked the fanciest velvet treated himself um and he looks doesn't he look banging i thought he looked so good and he felt so good and he had this bow tie he got from them as well which was like sort of a loose tie bow tie so it just it just all tied together really nicely i think and with the color scheme that like burgundy deep claret jacket um with all of the other rich jewel tones we had in the wedding i think just really tied into that sort of vintage feel so he felt amazing he looked amazing great we were both very happy um now the bridesmaids again i didn't make their dresses because one of the bridesmaids was away working a lot and just the fitting would have been a nightmare um i do in hindsight think i possibly could have made these with the sicily slip dress um, or there's another slip dress pattern. So I think it's one of those that like, if you didn't want to buy them, but you like the look, you could make these fairly easily. 
Um, I bought these from a brand called Rewritten Bridesmaids. I said to them they could pick whichever design they wanted in a certain colour, um, and they both picked the same one. Uh, so it was sort of like a slip type dress. Low back, had this nice sort of sash thing that they both wore in front of their necks um, in this gorgeous forest green colour. Um, and yeah, again, they just look banging. Now the flower girls, we don't have all of our official pictures back yet. So I don't have any really good pictures of all of the flower girls. I will bring those in when they come. So like in a later video, I'll try and show you a, a better look of them, but you'll get an idea of the look of the flower girls from some of these more candid shots. Now, most of you who have followed will know that I made their dresses. Um, I used Violet Field Threads pattern. Um, for the bodice, the skirts, I just did myself because it's a bit weird and I don't know if I'm just stupid, but <laughs> there weren't skirt pattern pieces and I could not find a description anywhere of how to draft the skirt. It referenced the skirt pieces, but there was no reference to those actual pieces anywhere. And I contacted Violet Field Threads and they never got back to me. So, which isn't great. Um, but so I just sort of made, they had like a straightish skirt underneath um, and then a nice little gathered skirt of the tulle over the top. I didn't go too crazy because I just wanted them to be, I mean, my youngest flower girl was two and a half. The eldest was 10. Um, I wanted them all to just be able to like move around and be quite comfortable um, and not feel too restricted for the day. The thing I love about this pattern is I think the silhouette at the top is really pretty. It's a really nice fairly simple construction for the bodice the bodice is lined and then you've got these big sort of dramatic sleeves and I just thought super cute um we added after I went up to Durham a couple of weeks before and it was quite cold we added in um these capes which again we purchased because I didn't have enough time to make them but I thought it looked really gorgeous and tied them in with the adult bridesmaids um and they had glittery shoes and then their flower crowns and their little wands and posies um, and they just looked like little angels. Again, I hadn't seen the whole look until the day. So I literally arrived at the church and all four of them were stood there looking adorable. And I was really relieved that the look had come together because we had quite a few different, you know, the, the stars and the, um, the green and the red and pink flowers. It was like a lot going on, but I thought they looked really cute. Um, apologies as well, the light is going mad at the moment, it's like bright dark, bright dark, but I'm going to carry on for now. Um, so yeah, so the main things I made for the ceremony were the flower girl dresses and as I said I'll show you more detailed pictures when we get our professional photos in, um, but I wanted to give you a little sneak peek now and I'm really pleased with how they turned out and the whole look I thought was super cute. Um, so that's the wedding party. The other things that I made for the wedding, now again, I'm going to admit to you, I made all this stuff before, I have a really short supply of photos, because there was so much happening in the week leading up, that by the time we got to the wedding, I just, I just didn't take that many photos, I didn't even wear my robe, I haven't got a photo of my robe yet, but I will sort that out at some stage. Um, Pyjamas, so I made these using the Carolyn, uh, it's the Closet Core Carolyn pattern, um, I'll pop a picture here of the PJs. Now I did wear these to get ready in. Um, this is a great pattern. It's a classic pattern. It's pretty quick to put together. Um, have had a bit of a weird thing with the fabric. So I was gifted the fabric as part of the Minerva brand ambassador program. It is supposed to be a stretch velvet, like stripe velvet thing. Now they sent me this fabric and it didn't feel massively velvety, but I was like, it's, it felt sort of like a textured jersey, striped jersey, but I was like, there was enough of a texture that I was like, well, maybe that's just like what the velvet is like. Now, I only discovered that this was not quite right when I ordered a little bit extra so that I could add some length to the trousers. We were all there for the pirate trouser fiasco. Um, and it turned up and it was totally different to the original fabric they'd sent me. So I'd, I'd ordered it through the same link, but I purchased the extra. And that was, the fabric was, the back backing fabric was like a see-through mesh. Whereas the backing fabric on the other fabric wasn't see-through at all. It was just like a jersey. And the velvet was much more velvety. Um, it was just like a completely different fabric. Um, 
Now, I think the pyjamas still worked. I think they looked very cute. They're really comfortable. And even with the cuffs being slightly different, it didn't matter. But it's a weird one because I have to write this up for the website. But I don't think that the bulk of the fabric I worked with is a proper reflection of the fabric that I'm supposed to be reviewing, which I think is more similar to the fabric that I purchased separately. So I haven't posted these yet because I want to get my facts right over which fabric I was actually sent. Um, but I thought I'd show you anyway. Um, I wore these through the mini moon as well. I thought they were really comfy and cute. And generally, the Carolyn, I'm sure you've heard loads of people say it's a really nice pattern. The fabric has a bit of stretch, which the Carolyn pyjamas, I think, are for woven, non-stretch fabrics. But it works because it's just comfy, you know. Um, so, yeah, really nice. Pleased with those. I also made my sweater um which you'll see i'll pop some pictures here again really chuffed with that i wore it the day after the wedding we met some friends for lunch before we went up to edinburgh and then i just lounged around in it a lot said to you before i don't do well in ivory i'm a messy girl okay so um i wear it once and it'll have a stain on it and it's currently in the wash um so every time i wear it i have to put it in the wash because i just just messy can't help it um messy girl life so um yeah so the robe as i said i didn't actually wear it and i didn't get a picture of the reason i didn't wear it initially was because it was so creased it was in this satin and it was so creased um and i meant to steam it and then with every i was going to steam it on the friday so i could wear it on the saturday and then with everything that happened on the friday i just didn't get a chance and then i didn't want to be wearing this massively creased thing all day and it wasn't cold or anything so there wasn't really a need for the extra layer um but I still, it's still going to be one of those things I wear. I just didn't actually wear it for my wedding. So um, that was using another closet core pattern, the Veron Veronique, Veronique, Veronique pattern. Um, again, lovely pattern, lovely robe. Just didn't wear it for my wedding, but that's okay. Um, <coughs> now, for the mini moon, we had a mix of things. You saw me make a load of outfits. I don't have pictures, again, of a lot of them because I'm the worst vlogger ever. Um, but I will get pictures. Two of them need repairs, which is why I don't have pictures. So one outfit that I wore pretty much the whole week, I'll put a picture of here. That was my self-drafted gathered skirt using this fabric on Mother Viscose and um, a toaster sweater. I'm also wearing a nice toaster sweater today. Um, a toaster sweater in cable knit with the extended neckline. So I doubled the depth of the, the neckline there. Um... This I wore all the time, super cosy, super wearable, and generally a real treat. Sorry about that, just had to stop to cough. Um, yeah, generally, absolutely loved wearing it so much that in my next video, I'm going to be talking a bit about what I'm going to plan to do next. Obviously, my focus has been on the wedding for ages, and I've come back and been a bit like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing now. So I've had a bit of a think, um, and I'm definitely going to make another gathered skirt and another toaster sweater because a they're just very easily wearable for bad weather but also i could wear them to work can chop and change the top and the skirt it's just sort of made me realize that that would be a very wearable addition to my wardrobe so i want to have a couple in rotation um i will talk more about that in my next video so that was one of the outfits the sicily slip dress is one that i don't have a photo of i'm going to chop so i'd hemmed it at the bottom um and the hem has become a bit twisted and it just it just annoyed me too much so the fabric actually doesn't fray so i think i'm just going to chop that off and just have the hem raw because when it was like that before like you couldn't even notice because of the nature of the fabric it doesn't fray it was not it was like the same color the whole way through so you couldn't sort of see the raw edge um and i've weighed it up and i think it will just hang a bit more nicely so I am going to chop off what I've done there and then I'll get a nice picture of that. But otherwise, I was really pleased with it. Um, the only dress that didn't work out was the tartan Upton dress I made. And that was because Nathan was zipping me into it and the zip broke. Um, so I've had a, every now and again, I'll have because it was a weird one because it fit. It was actually a bit because the, the wool had like quite a bit of give. So there was plenty of space. But I just sometimes find those invisible zips with like sturdier fabrics. They're just like not quite, don't quite have what the strength they need. So I'm going to get an exposed metal zip. 
I'm going to take the invisible zip out. I'm going to put an exposed sturdy metal zip in the back and then have that as a design feature. Um, I just need to order the right zip. But the dress I love. I just didn't get to wear it. So there's not a picture. Um, also, the other outfit that you saw me make was the Erin Dungarees. So I've got a couple of rough pictures of that one. Again, I've got to do a bit of work on the fit. So I've decided these, this is, this is the problem with sewing stuff quickly is like half the stuff was not wearable because I did it too quickly. Um, the, I felt this with my last pair of errands, but I would just have the ties a bit lower, but I want to wear this a bit higher up. So I just need to add a little to the um, like length to the crotch seam. So what I want to do, because I just want them, they fit, but they just are not like super comfy for sort of, you know, if I'm actually doing stuff in them rather than just walking and standing and whatever, they just don't have enough give there to be really like actually useful for what I want to use them for. So I'm going to unpick the crotch seam and I'm going to actually just put like an extra, I'm going to do like a wedge, like a wedge that's this shape like this. Well, no, not like that, like that. And I'm going to put that in so we just get an extra little bit of length in that seam. And I'm hoping that's going to be enough. I mean, I'm making them mostly to wear around the house, but I do just want them to be like comfy to wear and to like do housey stuff in. Um, yeah, so I've got a few adjustments to make. I'm not getting rid of any of them because I think they're all almost wearable, but I've just got to make the adjustments to make them fully wearable. So I think that's pretty much it for me on wedding stuff for now. As I said, I'm going to add some pictures and some footage at the end in case that's something you're interested in. We had some amazing vendors. We've had the initial uh, pictures back from our photographer. So just like first look ones. So he just sent like a handful. Um, I'll have shown you some of those already, but I'll add some more at the end. Um, our cake was so good. It was so good. Um, literally every element. Our florist was amazing. Hair and makeup, fabulous. Um, the, a family friend of ours, Judy, did the church. The church looked amazing. She decorated the tables. They looked great. Um, we had a stunning cake. Amazing band in the evening. Like, the band was so good. We had this really great photo booth and they personalised everything for us and just were amazing. Um, just every element. I did these little gift bags for the kids and I picked different things and the kids loved them. The gifts, with every, everything, every little detail. I'd gotten lots of extra stuff for the tables. And when I went in, it was just all done so perfectly. Because obviously you get everything and then you don't see it together till the day. Um, yeah, I was just so thrilled. Honestly, I can't tell you how thrilled I was with how it all turned out. Um, we got great pictures on the moors. My dad's, we went in my dad's classic car and that didn't break down. Amazing. Um yeah overall it was just a great day there was even actually a moment in the church i'll add a picture of it after this when me and nathan were saying our vows it was actually when i just started saying my vows and the sun like broke through and shone directly onto me and the photographer managed to get a picture of it every person i spoke to afterwards was saying you'll never guess when you were saying your vows this beam of light just came in and it was magical um yeah there was just so much like that that went the day before had gone so badly and then the day of, it just all came together. It was, um, you know, so we're very lucky actually in the end. Um, so yeah, so if you're not interested in weddings, you've done very well to get this far because I've just blathered on. Um, as I said, I will have another vlog for later in the week. That is going to include um, some information on some fabric shopping I did in Edinburgh. So Nathan, put, we went to a shop, um, oh, what was it called? I think it was called Fabric Focus in Edinburgh. But I will double check that for the next video. Um, and Nathan picked out a fabric for something I'm going to make him for Christmas and I got a couple of bits um, I've also ordered some fabrics I don't know if they'll come yet but I will I will talk about them if they do um, and I'm going to talk to you about some of my plans for what I'm going to make moving forward what my focus is going to be um, and yeah maybe talk about some new patterns you know just the huge so I thought I'd get all the wedding stuff in one video and then it does just mean if you're not interested in it you can just bypass it there will also be another wedding video where I'm going to look at some of the other dresses I tried on. Um, and yeah, that'll be more either if you're just interested in wedding dresses and styles or if you are someone who's plus size who might at some point go wedding dress shopping. Um, or even if you're not plus size, you just want to see what it's like.
you know um yeah so i've got off plans for a few things i should have a bit more time um i've just got to find my sojo again just got to find it it's like i've come out of the wedding and i don't know what to do with myself so yeah i will see you for another vlog later in the week thank you for joining me and um yeah i'll see you soon all right bye